The 2022 Winter Olympics, the most eye-catching competition, men's single figure skating. Nathan Chen from the U.S. won the gold medal on Thursday. However, two-time defending Olympic champion Japan's Yuzuru Hanru continued his legacy despite falling twice in the opening minutes of the free skate. He is known for saying to skate with love in Beijing. Henry and other athletes are talking positively about the Capitol Indoor Stadium rink where the skating events took place, saying it looked really good and it is the best among recent Olympics. That makes Professor Zhang Xinrong and his team from Peking University feel relieved as they are applying new technologies to create great quality and environmentally friendly ice and snow for the 2022 Winter Olympics. The core technology uses carbon dioxide as one of the refrigerants. How does it work? Well, in essence, the process of evaporating liquid CO2 into gas form absorbs energy, which turns water into ice. That is the breakthrough as the energy absorbed is not wasted later by compressing gas CO2 into supercritical state. The energy is recycled to heat other places in the stadium. I visited him recently and heard him talk about it, how the technology worked. In my mind, I always thinking uh, how to use uh, carbon dioxide as a useful resources. Yeah. And uh, uh, CO2 can be used as a very useful substance to transport the energy. The from the, the low temperature to high temperature. Yeah. By this transportation, by CO2, the cold energy and also thermal energy can be made simultaneously. Mm -hmm. But it was rarely used earlier. Um, yes, yeah. And about 20 years ago, um, I remember uh, um, we are first uh, to put forward uh, the idea using the carbon dioxide uh, as a working fluid for power generation, for electricity, electricity generation. Yeah. And then uh, starting that point, uh, and we start to uh, think more uh, using CO2 um, to make uh, refrigeration and to uh, to make the hot water, uh, space heating, you know, many, uh, many applications. Around the world, how many, are there many ice rinks uh, taking advantage of CO2 to make it happen? Uh, not many. Uh, from uh, uh, two or three years ago, uh, the CO2 uh, uh, were used to replace uh, the traditional refrigerant, such as uh, freon and uh, ammonia, uh, something like this. Mm. Yeah, but uh, as you know, the freon is a man-made substance, the refrigerant. Uh, it has a, a good uh, a refrigeration cap capacity, but uh, it's, uh, it's very bad for our environment. Yeah, for, for over the planet, mm -hmm. yeah. For example, the uh, the the ordinary uh, freon fluid uh, used to um, in the ice rink, uh, for example, is R five hundred seven. The the one tone of uh, if we use the one tone of the uh, R five hundred seven, it's equal to the about uh, uh, 3,900 ton of the carbon dioxide emission. Yes. So it, it's a lot, it's a lot. Mm. So how it works? So CO2 owns a very good uh, uh, flow and uh, heat transport uh, uh, character. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, uh, we can use uh, the liquid CO2 evaporation process to make the gas states oh. and by, by this process we can have a very good re refrigeration 
yeah, uh, for for ice making, that's a, that's a excellent. We can use a liquid CO two to make ice, mm -hmm. and then the the gas CO two state can be uh, compressed to high pressure, mm -hmm. high temperature, to cross the, the critical point. Yeah, uh, and then we can have the supercritical states. The supercritical states uh, has a uh, very huge uh, entropy energy. So we can recover all the energy from the ice surface, from the ice uh, making process. Uh, and uh, then we can recover all the heat, and make this uh, very efficient. Wow, that's okay. fascinating. There seems to be little waste in the process. Yes. And, and it seems to be recycled CO2 can be used for a function that it has never done before, right? Yes. yes. That's fascinating. Yeah. So there are about 10 layers if we really check the ice rink, even though it's about only 2 to 3 centimeters, and yet there are 10 layers. So tell me about those 10 layers. What are the functions of theirs? Eventually, how CO2 is being used? Which layer? Yes, and uh, the liquid CO2 in the, in the tube. And uh, above this uh, a liquid CO2 tube, and there's a... Um, so it's almost like a floor heating system, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. And, um, and uh, there is uh, some functional layers, uh, such as uh, waterproofing and anti-freezing uh, layer. Uh, you know, it's uh, something like this. There's uh, multi-layers, functional layers, to, to protect uh, uh, the liquid CO2 tube and protect the uh, over ice surface to make sure uh, we can sustainably uh, making a very good ice surface. So about seven to eight functional layers. Yes. And then on the top of that, there's the water. Uh, yeah, and uh, 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 during the ice making process, the liquid uh, water, you know, it uh, uh, becomes the solid water, solid water, that is uh, ice. Yeah, um, um, uh, from this process, uh, a lot of, a uh, huge of energy uh, released mm -hmm. from this uh, physical process. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, we, 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 we think how to use of this huge of energy. Yeah, because in the traditional free on process, uh, this uh, huge of uh, heat or is released to the ambient is, is no use, it's waste just throw away, yeah. But uh, uh, we use the CO2 as a uh, refrigerant, mm -hmm. and we make the transcritical CO2 um, thermodynamic cycles, yeah. And uh, these uh, thermodynamic cycles, uh, um, uh, we can recover, there's one of the um, advantages most of the advantages, we, we, we can recover all the, this uh, huge uh, heat mm. yeah, as a uh, use for thermal energy for the, uh, for the venue. Where does the CO2 come from? Yeah, uh, we capture CO2 from the uh, many industrial sections, yeah, such as uh, the mechanical factories, such as uh, the food manufacturing factories. Sounds like a beautiful idea, but rarely used earlier. So I would assume there was a lot of debate about whether this is the, you know, the plan to be. Yeah, debate uh, comes from uh, uh, the, cha the challenge. <laughs> that means uh, there's a big challenge um, from this system. What are the challenges? Yeah, there's um, a lot of challenges. Uh, for example, the people will say um, how to control the, the supercritical CO2. Uh, supercritical uh, CO2 is not, uh, is a, is a, is not a liquid, it's not a, the gas. It's a very different uh, uh, state of the substance. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so how to control? It's an uh, instability, instable. So how do you control? How to uh, 
this is uh, this is one point, and also uh, it's a high pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, high pressure. How to make the very safe uh, equipment for the supercritical part? You 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 need to make a very compact, very safe. Um, uh, for example, the heat exchanger, mm -hmm. the the liquid and the gas uh, separator. Yeah, you you make sh make sure all is uh, equipment is uh, safe. Yeah, and also we have a very super huge the ice surface. Mm -hmm. yeah, in this time, uh, in our the uh, national uh, speed uh, skating oval, uh, we have a uh, uh, twelve thousand square meter wow. ice surface. So how? Can we make sure all is uh, the ice surface temperature is uh, is uh, uniform? Mm. According to IOC's rule, uh, it needs to be anywhere within the ice rink, within five one point five degrees Celsius. Yeah. So no more than that. Yeah. The, the liquid CO two uh, we use the liquid CO two under the ice surface. And uh, uh, the liquid CO2 becomes uh, the gas states. Mm -hmm. And this is a phase change process. Uh, because the phase change process, the temperature doesn't change. So uh, this time, uh, in our ice surface, 12,000 square meter ice mm -hmm. surface, the temperature difference across the all the ice surface is uh, less than uh, the low point five degree. Wow. Yeah. Much lower than what the IOC requires. Yes. yes. Are you proud of that? Yeah, it's a, a, a very proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there was a lot of pressure. I, I know that the debates would last about two to three years. Uh, yes, there's a many conference, uh, debate conference, <laughs> 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 debate <laughs> meeting. <laughs> yeah, we need to uh, uh, say, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the the reason why the CO two <laughs> again and again. <laughs> that's funny, but what about the cost? I'm sure that's one of the biggest concerns. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, the cost is not high, because usually, um, because uh, this time, our cold energy and the thermal energy is all in one system. Uh, uh, for example, uh, take uh, the uh, national speed skating oval as an example, and uh, we have a refrigeration system, and we have a hot water system, space heating system, and the dehumidification system, and also preheating system, and uh, a lot of system. But uh, by CO two, we can integrate all in one. So just uh, the CO two. A transcritical CO2, the uh, direct cooling system, then can simultaneously make the cold energy and the thermal energy for dehumidification, for preheating, yeah. for hot water, for isolate, for space heating, for all the audience, you know, all in one system. So cost is, a, uh, is, a, uh, is not high. Yeah, so that is exactly how it's being done now. At the national skating rink. Yes, yes. Th this time, the national uh, skating rink is uh, all in one by CO two. Yeah, th that is also uh, what I designed just uh, after the, the Beijing um, win the the bid for the two thousand twenty two Winter Olympic Games. So you voluntarily already trying to think about the plans before they knock on your door. Yes, yes, yeah. At that time, it is a very natural uh, a volunteer. <laughs> is a voluntarily and uh, to think about it. Were you excited when the plan was finally adopted after so many you know, conferences, debates, and everything? Yes, every time I stepped uh, into um, the National Speed uh, Skating Oval, yeah, I'm a, I, when I look at the, the huge ice surface by, uh, made by the CO2, I'm very excited. 
Yeah. Did you touch it? Yes, yes, yeah. Does it feel good? Yes, it's, um, I feel it's a, uh, uh, how is a different, uh, what is the difference between the, the real ice we make uh, uh, and uh, the, the experiment mm -hmm. as the uh, ice surface. Now, China has been talking about 300 million people on ice and snow, you know, for the winter sports. Yeah. Now, you know, Professor Zhang, just like everybody else, China is not necessarily a, uh, shall we say, a winter sports country yeah. because yeah. most of China is not covered by ice or snow. Yes. So, what about that goal? What does that mean to you as a technology expert? Yeah, let's say the um, big issue uh, we sh should think about it. Um, because uh, before us, uh, we have a two road uh, we, can, we can go. The first, uh, we use a traditional road. That means uh, we use a traditional technology, mm -hmm. uh, such as a free on technology. So 300 uh, million people, uh, the ice and snow sports, that means we, we, we need to uh, consume a lot of free on substance. We consume a lot of energy. Mm. So uh, we need to think, we have to think another, the new road. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, by using CO2, for example, we can make uh, over ice and the snow making system uh, very f energy efficient and also environment friendly and also very safe. I think that is a, that is a new road, mm -hmm. but it's very difficult. But I think uh, it, uh, we should go this way. That is the way to go. That is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Is there something you want to say to those who are enjoying the ice that you are working on, uh, to the athletes and the coaches and everybody participating in the winter games? Yes, I hope uh, um, they can break a lot of uh, Olympic records uh, <laughs> this time uh, during the uh, Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic Games. Because they have good eyes. Yes, we have uh, good eyes and uh, we have good snow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor Zhang. Yeah.